Ambient music in the 90s was some of the most unique and forward-thinking music I've ever heard. With the prevalence of the sampler, artists like the Future Sound of London took over, inspiring other genres to incorporate similar elements and techniques into their own sound. I'm going to show you how to create 90s ambient music kind of like this. When you go back and listen to 90s ambient, you're going to find a huge variety of styles within the genre. From more ambient heavy tracks with no percussion, to tracks underpinned by a groove of some sort, to tracks with more melodic progressions that could fit into a movie score. A core idea was experimentation and there is no right or wrong way to approach this. With samplers being so prevalent, we saw a lot of producers essentially put together a collage of samples running through musty effects units to produce the final result. This collage-based sampler approach is fascinating to me and primarily what I wanna focus on today. For this specific track here, I have two kind of core sections. One is a more ambient section, so less melodical and music-like and more, again, just general ambience. And then I have another section here which is a little more musical, so almost like an ambient score for a film. And I just wanted to combine the two together here to give you guys some examples of ways you could approach this. Now, for the first portion here, we have a lot of different sounds going on. And the first one here is actually from the Korg Triton. And this is a preset that comes from one of my preset packs. Sounds like this when you play a single note. And so we took that note and we simply just played it way down on the keyboard around an E2. And when you think about it, a rompler like the Triton is essentially a sampler where the samples are just pre-baked into it. And so when you transpose samples down or up, you get that really gritty ambient sound out of things. Now the next thing I have here is this sample that I think I sampled uh, from another ambient track back in the 90s, but it's about eight bars here. It sounds a little like this. So really nice ambient sample there. As you sample other music in other songs, you're gonna get the effect of the effects that they had when they sampled this. So it's like you're almost double dipping in the texture that you get by sampling uh, other music sample packs, so on and so forth. And so we took this in, just put a low pass on here, and that's what we have in the intro. Now, I have some other samples here that I took from my Uncanny Dreams ambient sample pack, and I'll play through a few of those. So just a really nice airy sound there we have with this sample. And then if we come to this next one down here, Right, another kind of airy sound, has some type of like bell in there, uh, just layering up these textures. Right, so if we look through here, we have the Triton doing that, then we have this sample. Right, you see how everything kind of comes together? And when you're laying, laying out and structuring the song, right, it's about finding these core samples and very smoothly trying to fit in other textures and sounds around that, which really just comes down to experimentation. And so a couple more samples we have in here as well. And then we have this little transition sound down here too. Now, 
right? And so that is how we're building up the ambience, right? It's a collection essentially of different samples and we're slotting in, arranging them the best we can. A few other sounds we have down here, this one here, kind of, again, another bit of a transition element to stack up with this other transition. And then if we come down to this guy, this came from a sample CD. Some type of like alien-ish sample there. So we have that pitched up and then we're playing an A2 here. So it's away from its root key, which again, as you pitch samples up and down, you just get different textures. And I think a lot of these sounds, you can take so many different samples, throw it in a sampler, or just pitch it way down, and it's just gonna create this really thick atmospheric sound. Now, the last thing we have here is actually, uh, I think it's like a bass sample here. And so what I did was pitch the sample way down, did a little bit of EQ, sounds like this. So it's almost like this ominous boom that happens at the beginning of the next phrase here. So after the eighth bar, comes in, and then boom. And that's it for the ambient portion here. Now, the second portion of the song here tried to make it a little more musical and less just sound effects in general goodies. And what I have in here first is a Triton up here playing this gorgeous chord here on the sort of thin crystal patch, which also comes from my preset pack. Just a nice airy combination patch there. And so what we do as we fade out of that ambient section into this one is we slowly uh, kind of fade that pad in. Next thing we have here again is the Triton. This is using the vector planet patch, which also comes from my preset pack. Bit of a high pass on there to get rid of some of the low end. And so we stack both of these up. And you see how it's just adding with this note around an E3. It's really complementing that pad nicely, almost sounds like it's dancing around on top. So a lot of movement in that sound, single note with that sound, chord, and the sound above. All right, next thing we have here, this is also from the Triton. This also comes from my preset pack here, and in this we are just playing a very short note progression, E3 to G3, layering that up. All right, moving on here, we're kind of building up this epicness here. We have another Triton preset here. I think this also comes from my preset pack, Hazy Gates. Just a nice vocal choir-like patch here, which sounds good when you play it very high up on your keyboard. And so what I did here is created this almost like string-like progression. So everything together. And 
in the final or one of the final sounds here is also from the triton frozen glaciers patch this comes out of the box and this is a very much just an atmospheric sound and the way we have it structured here is as this note above it that kind of string like progression fades out this sound comes in so we talked about earlier kind of arranging things to find little pockets in natural ways to bring in different sounds that don't make things sound so abrupt and sudden, right? So. And what I'm actually noticing here is we could probably nudge this back a little because as this sound above it fades out, I think there's a natural point for the next sound to fade in a little more smoothly. So let's actually try this. There we go. And so it's all of those micro adjustments, really playing your song back, listening and finding those natural pockets to like fade things in and out and layer on top. The last thing I want to call out here is all of this was done right in the box with VSTs and samples, but for the effects, my delays and my reverbs, I'm actually using two very old effects units. One is the Alesis Quadroverb, which is doing a ping pong delay here. And the other is the Zoom Studio 1201 that is doing a bit of a reverb. And I think a lot of the sound from this 90s ambient came from this, these old machines that had that gritty quality to them. And so I think sending these sounds through these old machines really helps enhance that old ambient like feel here. And so again, the first one we have here is the Quadroverb. And if I actually solo this, so we'll solo just the effects channel, you can hear just how gritty this little unit is. And then we also have the Zoom Studio here doing the reverb. So if we solo just the reverb. And we can put both of them together. Right, both of those together, again, very gritty, old school sounding. And I think texture really benefits in ambient music, especially if you're trying to go for that 90s vibe and these machines just give you that texture. So anyways, guys, hope you found this video insightful, fun. Let me know down in the comments what you wanna see a video on next. Till the next time, see you later.